All right, TLF family, today we're going to talk about gut health, okay? Gut health controls everything, okay? It controls how you're going to look, your physique, controls your performance, how you feel, and how you want to live the rest of your life, okay? But those of you that are just like, hey, I just want to look good so I don't have to worry about, worry about my gut health, you're very wrong in that, in that idea, that, that kind of thinking process is wrong, because it definitely affects how you look, okay? We're going to talk about that in a second. So, uh, we're going to bring your attention to the board. Hopefully this shows up you know, well, but if it doesn't, just listen to me speak. Uh, we're going to talk about gut health today. Uh, the goal for gut health is to always keep your infl inflammatory load or inflammation low. Okay? Uh, and, and when I say inflammatory load, that just means that how much inflammation are you racking up on over time? Because this really matters. Okay? So if you're chronically inflamed, for like six or seven years, that's gonna destroy your metabolism, your ability, your ability to basically digest and process nutrients. That's gonna destroy your hormones, how well you can keep your, your sex hormones in check, uh, how well you can uh, keep your fat burning hormones in check. That's gonna, it's gonna destroy your ability to put on muscle and burn fat, which a lot of you are interested in. That's a, that's a big pain point for most of you, right? But there's so many other things that it affects. So, when, when I talk about inflammation, the first thing I'm thinking about is your immune system, okay? Because inflammation is usually a product of your immune system reacting to something that's foreign or, or off, okay? And this can, this can be across several factors. It can be you putting a food in your mouth. It can be you being exposed to an environmental toxin, like a mold or a spore or chemicals. It can be uh, you not moving enough. You're getting super, super tight. And, and flexed forward, you're also building up a lot of stagnant energy in your body, and that's also causing your immune system to react and say, I don't like this. So you end up being inflamed and bloated. So you look kind of puffy. Same goes with when you drink a lot of alcohol or beer, you get bloated or puffy, your face looks puffy, your eyes look puffy. And that's because you're literally inflamed, okay? And so a lot of times people are like, oh, I lost so much weight in the beginning. Whenever they start a fitness program or they start eating really well, most likely you lost a ton of inflammation. You just you stop bloating so much, you look a ton better. You stop retaining water, you just look so much better simply from fixing your food, fixing your movement, okay? So uh, moving on from that, we have to understand that about, I think it was like 70, some, some interesting stat I read the other day, it was about 70 to 80% of your immune system uh, resides in your gut. So I think they call it the enteric nervous system. You have more nerves in around your gut than you do your brain, which is crazy to think about. Uh, so a lot, a lot is weighing in on how well your gut is performing. When I talk about gut too, I'm thinking your stomach, your intestines, your colon, all of that not just, hey, your stomach, okay? So it's the entire system. So the other thing to understand, most people don't get this, even when they go to the doctor, is that when they go to the doctor and get all these markers read, like they look at their HDL, their LDL, looking at their sex hormones, looking at their psychological health, like you know their dopamine, serotonin levels, the neurotransmitters that are being released, um, a lot of those, those markers are dependent on inflammation again. So when you're looking at like LDL, right, and, and HDL cholesterol, what's actually more important is, do you have inflammation in your blood vessels? And that's more of an indicator of heart disease than just saying, hey, you have good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. And this, the same thing goes for psychological health. When we look at your neurotransmitters, and, and if you have a, a, a severe chemical imbalance, have we, have we done everything we could possibly do with your gut yet? Have you really fixed the bacteria in there? And if you haven't, then you wanna go there first, because that definitely directly affects your mood, okay? Of course, anyone that's constipated and feels like crap, you're not gonna feel good. You're gonna be kinda cranky. You're gonna be pissed off at people. So it, it directly affects your mood in so many ways other than just being constipated, of course, but that's something to acknowledge and honor, okay? So, we've gone over how important it is to acknowledge that your gut is involved in the process of getting more and more healthy, right? Now, in terms of body composition and muscle mass, if your, if your sex hormones are not properly being released, like testosterone, 
uh, growth hormone, which are heavily involved with burning fat and building muscle. Uh, your other fat burning hormones like leptin, uh, insulin, uh, if that's not regulated properly. If all those hormones are out of whack and you're, you're heavily inflamed, your body's not gonna be thinking in terms of, hey, how do I build muscle? It's not, it's, it's too much energy to do that. Right now it's focused on how can I clear up the inflammation in my body? It's not thinking about building muscle. It's not economical at all. So when people say, oh, I don't need to worry about it, you're, you're severely wrong because you're destroying your capacity to even put on muscle and burn fat. And here's some things you can do and think about when, when it comes to these issues, okay? The first thing you wanna think about, this is the thing that people hate, the reason why I talk about it so much is because of this fat. You have to eat vegetables. You, know, you gotta grow up at some point and eat your vegetables. And, and they need to come from several sources. You can't just get content only with one source, like green beans and that's it, okay? You wanna go leafy, you wanna go cruciferous, the crunchy vegetables. You want to rotate through those vegetables as much as you can. That's going to ensure that you're properly digesting your food. You're able to change the bacterial environment in your body, in your gut. Um, you're able to avoid the inflammation because all this awesome food right here that's heavily, heavily, heavily dense in micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, and enzymes, helps you digest the food. It's something your gut has an easier time digesting. And so you have less chance of having that inflammatory load rack up. And also, of course, your body is being nourished by these awesome, awesome things. So that's number one. Eat your vegetables, rotate as many as possible. I would try to get vegetables with every meal you have throughout the day. You just, you can't get enough of it. Okay? And they're calorie sparse. Next thing, avoid environmental toxins. It just means that if you have too many fragrances around your house, like blade plugins and stuff like that, uh, it's been shown over time, over the studies right now, we're seeing this over and over, that it affects your endocrine system, your hormonal system. So people's testosterone goes down, uh, people's estrogen goes up, and the higher your estrogen, the more uh, characteristics are taken on by the body to be um, less inclined to put on muscle, okay? Uh, you're more along the lines of putting on more fat. Uh, you, your cortisol levels go up more. Your stress hormone goes up. Avoid those fragrances, avoid like heavy places where there's too much smoke involved. That's something else your immune system has to deal with again, okay? Avoid, um, avoid like emotionally toxic envir environments as well. That's the stress on your body that you have to take on as well. And also affects your immune system, okay? Everything ties back to this. We have to always remember that. Uh, sunlight, getting enough, okay? You want vitamin D, vitamin D controls the expression of, of thousands of genes in our body. Uh, and these genes either turn off uh, or turn on dependent on uh, what you do, right? So sunlight's very important because it affects your, your, your joint integrity, it helps you uh, sleep better, it helps your, all your hormone, hormones work better, work better, especially with fat burning hormones. Uh, vitamins and minerals, we talked about that earlier, but sometimes it's just not enough to eat vegetables. I'd recommend getting a test a company like Wellness FX is a good place to get a test from. Look and see where you're deficient. And then accordingly, you can get certain supplements to fix those deficiencies, okay? High quality H2O, water is so, so important, right? Water is something that you've heard it over and over. You're 70% water, you're 30% tissue, right? Uh, so it's very important to get enough water throughout your day and make sure it's high quality. Not that, that crappy little burr filter you have in the fridge, because that's only this much filter. You get with a local company, that really filters their water. We have one in Austin called Cielo. Does a really good job. Has hundreds and hundreds of feet of filter. It gets all that nasty stuff out, toxic load out of there. Um, so next thing, movement. Movement is key. Your immune system is heavily tied to, to your movement. Your muscles have these lymph pumps that pump all this awesome fluid throughout your body. But if you're not moving and you're stagnant, guess what? You're more prone to getting sick. You're more prone to uh, conserving fat. You're not gonna get the goals that you want, okay? Okay, increase your fat intake. Increase your fat intake, increase uh, collagen intake. These are, these are key when it comes to uh, decreasing inflammation. Recovering from workouts too. Recovering enough is so, so key because if you're not recovering, then you're always in a breakdown state. You're always just breaking down your body and not doing anything to, to conserve lean mass and get healthier. Uh, last thing we tell people all the time, if you're not getting enough food, your fats, proteins, um, and your carbs, then it's gonna show up in your workouts. Uh, we saw it recently, someone came in, didn't eat enough, 
uh, they felt kind of nauseous. And if you're working on nothing, you're gonna start you're gonna start pulling energy from places you don't want to. Your own muscle tissue, your own bone tissue. You don't want that. You want to retain that and put on awesome, awesome stuff. You want to retain your gains, right? So here are just some of the things you can begin to do, right? And there's there are more details. Like we can probably do a whole like segment on just one topic over and over and over. But here are things to begin to think about whenever you're not getting the results you want. Whenever you feel bloated, whenever you feel like you're inflamed and you're, you're still conserving more and more fat. There are always more things you can optimize, y'all. And if you want to learn more about exactly what you can do under each topic, reach out to us. Reach out to us at, at Sumer at, let me write this down, hope you can see this. I'm going to erase this real quick. At Sumer at trainlifefit.com. I'll we'll probably put a little thing that comes across the screen here as well. Reach out to us there and ask us about how you can get started with your your own journey, your nutrition journey, your fitness journey. Come get a free assessment with us here at Train Life Fit and we'll get you situated. Okay? So until next time y'all, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit like, hit subscribe, and more and more information is coming soon. Much love.